everyone. Thank you. Welcome back. Oh, it's wonderful to be here on the Triforce podcast. Man, it's approaching like four or five years. Actually, I don't actually know how long it's been since we do this. I should have, I should have checked. Would you like me to check? <laughs> it's got to be about five years. When the right? first episode uh, of Let's this podcast was. I can tell you. Because like, I was just thinking, damn. We've been doing this a long time. It's got to be five years. Uh, uh, around five years, right? Because it's how many episodes? 200? So, uh, odd? episode uno of the Triforce podcast went out five years ago. Ah, uh, there we go. March the 23rd, 2016. Holy sh- 2016. Yeah. Oh so so it's a, God, we're approaching man. six years. Oh, so holy actually. crap. Wow. That's crazy. So, ju- in fact, we started it the week before my birthday. So I'm going to turn 46 around the time that the Triforce turns six. And you're turning 46? Yeah. In two, two, two months. Not even that. Jeez. So that means respect. that I've been recording no, the respect. Triforce podcast. For longer than ten percent of my lifetime, it's pretty good. Yeah, and what? What? what what's your takeaway <laughs> at the end of it all? What do you think? Kill me. Kill, kill you. You're <laughs> this done. This is ten percent of my life I've spent. I've been a member of the tribe for more than that. Because ten percent of my life would be four, four point six years, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, your wife. You've been with her over, over fifty percent of your lifetime, oh, easy. right? Yeah, I think like so. Yeah, sixty or sixty-five percent. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm gonna say I actually really enjoy this podcast. Oh, yeah, me uh, too. My, uh, I know, I know. my, my thinking behind uh, just about everything is that the the finest things in life are the things that come easiest, right? Right? The things you don't think about, the things that you don't have to really make a lot of uh, effort with. You know what <laughs> I mean? That is the opposite of perceived wisdom. I'm fascinated. Yeah, by it really is. Because like champagne's really quite high effort. Truffles are quite rare. Yeah. Uh, steak takes quite no, a lot no, of effort. No, no. For me, like, like all the like... stuff that like the best stuff is 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 the easy stuff for me. Like I just feel like you know, like the stuff that you just take in your stride. You know, like the stuff you don't even realize you're doing, but somebody will turn around and be like, "How do you do that every day?" And you're like, "Oh yeah, I guess I do that every day." Those are those are like the best things, right? The things you don't have to think about because then you just spend like less time thinking overthinking thinking like analyzing like what you're mm. doing and more time just doing it as long as so, you're having fun right like it's <clears> fine which, which things that you've done have required a great deal of effort even just in the last few years um, that you weren't pleased with and that you didn't enjoy when they were completed i'm not talking about tasks like cleaning up your garage right that's never going to be no. something that's like fun but i'm saying yeah. something that you worked on and when you finished it you were just like, you know what? I didn't enjoy this as much as just waking up in the morning and having a cup of coffee. I mean, because that's like essentially what you're saying. A normal job. Is it working hard for something and finally achieving it? is far less satisfying than just having something that happens and you don't even notice it. I think that's really satisfying, actually, because you you, you get to the end, you're like, oh, yeah, like this this great thing has happened and I didn't even really realize it. But now I'm realizing it. And but I I appreciate it sort of thing. Right. I think if I worked a normal job. Uh, day to day, uh, my life would be super different, right? I'd be probably really unhappy, probably really uh, feel like I like everything is more difficult, right? Like you have to wake up at a certain time, you have to go get out of your house by a certain time. You've got kids that you need to like manage around all of that stuff as well. So I guess like for me, I'm just grateful that I don't have to do any of that stuff. You know, mm. I can just I I I, I live at my own pace. And that has come easy for me. And when I look back, I just think that's great. Like uh, I'm, I'm really, really one of the lucky ones, right? Like to be able to. But are, what are you look good at? And say that. I'm not, I don't you think know. I'm necessarily good at anything, but I think I'm. Well, no, but you must be. The things you do every day. Are I the think things... I'm good at chilling. <laughs> right, and that's uh, where we've no, come that's to. why that's what I strive to right. do all the time. You know what I mean? Like, we're, like you're a very chill guy. I'm just not that's not very thinking healthy. about it. You know, but. I am fully chilling all the time. Well, the the odds on you living the longest out of the three of us has just gone way up. Oh, yeah, you know? I hope so. I saw a picture on Reddit today of a guy, it was like an old grandpa, playing what looked like Crusader Kings 3 on, I'm not even joking, it had to have been a 60-inch television screen. <laughs> okay. And he was sitting like right up next to it, forming the German Empire. And I thought, that... That's it for him. That's me. I'm going to that's that I'm going to be that guy like probably in 20, 30 years or whatever, you know what I mean? Like my kids will be keep the dream alive grown and they'll be starting their lives and, you know, maybe having kids and stuff and I'm just going to be playing CK3 or whatever. Like I'm just chilling. Yeah, building the German Empire. If you did you see there was a Steam game came out called uh, Sex with Hitler? No, yeah. I haven't seen um, that. God. Yeah. Well, people seem mostly angry because he had more than one testicle in it. 
Like that was the biggest reason people were mad about but it. I, I thought the whole testicle thing was a myth. Well, his was historically what was he without one testicle? Like, but, was well, that a... was the song. Hitler has only got one ball. The other is in the Albert Hall, right? Isn't right. that yeah. how it goes? So I, I don't know if that's true or if that was just a piece of popular propaganda amongst the troops to make fun of their enemy, which is fair enough. There was a lot of propaganda back Absolutely. then. Absolutely. I mean, ah. well, but, but, but bear in mind that same song was used in, it was Colonel Bogey from World War One, yeah. and then it was another song before that, and it sort of went all the way back. It was all this, it was always kind of a song that was sung by army types, you know, while they were marching along. And, while you know, they were marching. Uh, yeah. It's had hundreds of different lyrics along with it. Much like all of these... A lot of these old, um, so the Longest Johns, by the way, our friends, the sort of, uh, I don't want to call them like pirate, but it's kind of more like sh like sailing, age of sailing, singing um, guys. They they sing a lot of Age sort of, of sailing. They just put their new album out. It's called Smoke and Oakum. I was listening to it this week. Oh, and yeah. A lot of the songs are covers, but the covers are... Old traditional songs. They're and like, are they, do, the, are they mostly a cappella? Like, do are they like a barbershop quartet sort of thing? Or do you, yeah, do, kind of. But it's it's a bit more distinct than that. It's because whereas a barbershop quartet is quite jolly and quite quite kind of automatically major key. I don't know. Very, it's very specific sound to it, right? There, there's is a little bit more of a kind of sort of sailing. I don't know. It's got it's got more sort of sea theme to it, and that, that sound. I don't actually know how to describe it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I do a terrible job. But but a lot of these songs, you know, were a historical song that they sang on British ships, and then it sort of got corrupted slightly when it went to America, and then it got corrupted slightly even more. And so there's quite a lot of songs that are sang about specific places that are about places in Hawaii. It's like take me back to old Maui or whatever. Do you think that song you know? Whiskey in the Jaro is a bit like that? Because I, I can't, I, I don't understand exactly. it. Exactly. I don't yeah. get it at all. What what don't you get? The whole thing. Whiskey I just, in the Jar. just find the entire thing kind of confusing. Like I, I, the, the song by Thin Lizzy? Well, I don't think, it, it's, it's like an old folk song though, right? It's not, I don't think Thin Lizzy devised the, the song in the first, or maybe so he did. the Irish folk band The Dubliners performed it. In right. the sixties, so it, it's yeah, these, an exactly old song. this kind of Irish sort of traditional kind of song. Exact that's... histories are unknown. It's one of those, but it's one of these ones exactly, and it goes back. Sometimes songs can be written in that style, and sometimes they can be inspired. And I think they follow certain like like chords and and progressions and things like this, where it's it's got a certain it sounds right, right, and that's all you need. Um, and so I'm sure there's modern ones that 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 sound like they're ancient and and vice versa. But man, I've I've really enjoyed listening to it, and it's sort of it's got this strangely inspiring kind of historical energy where it's I don't know it's the whole pioneer spirit and the kind of like going out there and braving this hard harsh world and trying to tame it or trying to try to live hard lives a lot of the time you know it's in, the, in the mines or you know in on a whaling ship or you know yeah do it as a as a trapper or something you know in the northern Canada it's like. There's this kind of strange, I don't know, I don't want to say manliness about it, but like kind of, you know, sometimes songs, obviously, I listen to a lot of metal and I, I listen to a lot of like, <laughs> yeah, really I, surprises I, me. Uh, yeah, I, he used to listen to um, Bodies by Drowning Pool while he played uh, WoW <laughs> PvP back in the day. A lot. It's true. Yeah. Big fan. Huge fan. Um, but I love that sort of high energy kind of like pumping like metal music. Does it and make I think you that, feel angry? No, it doesn't. It makes me feel like like ep I like the epic soundtracks. You know, I like. Right. I also like listening to these kind of like Lord of the Rings soundtracks and stuff. Well, obviously not a lot. All of them. I hate. I hate. I've spoken about this before, but I hate how a soundtrack to a movie is often just every song that's in the movie, and so it's like a really odd journey of epic soundtrack, then sad bit, right. then kind of weird, spooky bit, creepy right. bit. Right. And it's like, oh, it's like a nine minute creepy track about him going through a spider den. I'm like, I don't want to listen <laughs> I know, to that but those, those, those songs work so well with visuals, but when you just listen to them on their own, they're not as great, right? right? Like, yeah, uh, that, that they, is they the could thing. be great if you sort of use them to, uh, like, like as music to like, uh, you know, like a, like a story from a book or something like that, I guess, but it's a, it's a lot more impactful with the visuals, right? And like the the the, the sort of like setting. And I mean, the, also the theme it's been composed 
specifically for what's happening yes. on screen. It doesn't follow the normal pattern of a song, yeah. which is structured around the song. So the moment you have a soundtrack, it's like, like you said, there'll suddenly be like a a, a, a loud bit where someone's surprised someone. You're like, yeah. what was that about? It was right in the middle of the song. There's something, something goes, Rrr! yeah, like in inter Interstellar. Like, oh, that was the jump scare moment in the song. You know, yeah. it makes sense when you're watching the movie, but not when you're just trying to do the washing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So, so I enjoy like I enjoy I, I actually use a lot of these like Spotify the the sort of play song radio. So like I find a song I like and then I choose the like play song. Yeah, radio I use it, that a lot. It too, plays actually. a lot of shit. And uh, another thing I've been doing a lot recently on Spotify is uh, is listening to um, this is lists. You know, like um, it, it's it they're they're like the auto compiled best of things for like per artist or band. Yeah, because like I've I recently I've had to take uh, my my son and my my middle daughter um to a lot of like parties and stuff like that which is required you know car trips not super long car trips but so every time we go, we go in the car i load up a this is of a of like a classic artist right like uh because i want them to like you know experience like 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 a wide range yeah. of music and not just like this is nwa fucking like tiktok music or whatever this garbage is, they're um, listening to right now um <laughs> this is too bad yeah no no not not quite <laughs> yeah, yet sure. like we've had a couple of this is uh so so the the recent this is we've had uh this is electric light orchestra which is which is pretty good oh. uh this is blondie this is madonna this is Michael Jackson. Like we've had some, we've had some classics, and the the common theme with all of these, like the big hit songs that like my kids probably have heard on the radio or whatever. My son will always say, "Oh, I know this song. It's in Splatoon too." <laughs> <laughs> like he says okay. it for every fucking song. I love that. Like I could find the most, uh, the, the the most out most there niche song. underground right. like hip hop song ever, and it'll have been in Splatoon too, according to this guy. All right, I got a question for you guys, and this is uh, this is something I, I got an email during the week from someone. Uh, do you remember we in previous episode we talked about uh, Michael Jackson's fame and how like everybody knew him, uh -huh. um, and it was there's that famous French uh, documentary where they went to meet one of these uh, tribes living in the South American jungle. They had heard of Michael Jackson. The young, the young people had heard of Michael Jackson. The elders, sure, had. yeah. But I mean, you know, they'd never heard of Zinedine Zidane, which was a weird thing to think. I mean, a, a lot of sure. people that don't even follow football in France probably might not have even heard of Zinedine Zidane. So I thought that was yeah. a weird one. He's got but a everyone, very, very unique name to, he to start with. He right? does, and he, he was obviously a great player. But everybody yeah. had heard of Michael Jackson. That was the point. Is even people that live literally off the grid and may see a television occasionally ha have seen this guy. So when we think about famous people nowadays and like what what is considered a superstar, I, I don't I don't think that there's anyone that is famous now who's on the same level as as say the Beatles were and then Michael Jackson was. Michael, yeah. Probably Madonna would also have to be up there. Do you think that's a sign of the time though? Like uh, the right, way so that we consume changed? media is so different now. You know, wh wh whereas before it was kind of prescribed to you that this person is famous, this person is popular, this person sees all of this airtime on things like MTV and commercial radio and stuff. But there's so many other outlets to to consume media now that I don't think you can measure them the same anymore, right? Like, I, I, do you not think those people have heard of Kim Kardashian and seen no, her no, ass? no, I don't, I really no. don't. And I mean, there's, I here's they're the like, thing yes, is the one with the ass. They know him. They know him. Right, but, they know but, who it is. So, so we're comparing. Obviously, if you think about now, anybody with a phone is plugged in. So, so the, the yeah. point is, given that more people are connected and it's easier to view, you know, fame and see these superstars and all the rest of it and see well, why why do we still not have in my opinion anyone as famous as as he was. I don't and think we I I I don't think as a society anymore we like I think about this from time to time and you when you look back at some of the people who were very famous and stuff it's it's different to to what it is now and i think there's a lot more emphasis on the way you look and your your lifestyle nowadays right because i i feel like a long time ago you would have had somebody who had a raw talent like musically or or whatever but didn't have the looks for it like elton john for example is is a really good example of this right He's not like a, an oil painting, and he never was one, right? But no. his musical talent was incredible, and he was... He was never pitched at teenage girls, he was that's never, right. No, he never was, but he is 
pretty sensational, right? Like, uh, so his music has reached corners of the of of the of the globe that you know what I mean. Like, it, 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 you're right. It would just be impossible. But I feel like nowadays it'd be it'd be really really rare to get somebody like Elton John. And what I mean by that is somebody who is uh, is very musically talented um, and is is able to create these big hits, but also somebody who's just not conventionally attractive either right like uh because i feel like there's i feel like there's just so much emphasis on on looks now and and like the, this sort of manufactured look as well maybe that's always been there somewhat but i feel like it, it's more so now I, I think i mean if you look at the beatles just go go ahead and google the beatles find a picture of them from the black and white era when they where they were like enormous like there was yeah beatlemania they are four very average looking blokes at best. Well they, well, they were though. They were just working class guys who right. played music but together. But the thing is, teenage girls l- loved them. Yeah. So I, I don't think it's it's even just pitching that they have to be good looking to pitch them. No, a, a oh, teenage no, girl. they would they were drips, dude. Yeah, but uh, well, they were they 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 were like for sure sought after. But they kind of um, in a way like and and probably a couple of bands before them though. But they 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 probably in a roundabout way uh, sort of created the notion of like a you know like a boy and uh, and a girl band, right? Like. Um, with like you know everybody having like a similar style or similar haircuts and and stuff like that. I the mean, Beatles? The, the Beatles, yeah, no, without no, 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 without no. meaning to, I think so. No, 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 because no. they've been they around the, for years. They were the been around f- for years. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying, though. I, I'm saying that they probably paved the way for like a lot of a boy bands. Right? No, 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 no. I'm saying it had been around for before the Beatles. Oh yeah, I know, but no, but not nobody as like uh, as as uh hugely like well, like Beatlemania was yeah. was was one of a kind right like you you never really had that with a band before yeah. i don't think but I, I i don't know if there'd ever been any band before or since that's been as 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 big as the beatles i mean people are still watching documentaries about them I now think, i think it has changed yeah i think they feel like nowadays capturing the majority that basically it's, it's this kind of thing which i read about called channel drift as well right where Stuff like the History Channel starts off doing history content, but then wants to chase more viewers, right? Yeah, like a different or, or grow a different demographic or something like that. Yeah, but mainly yeah. just trying to hit the biggest demographic, and that is means they end up doing this reality TV stuff, and they do the the swag hunters and the flipping, what is it called, storage wars, and all this stuff, which is very loosely tied to history because they're looking for historical shit yeah, in storage in old things. Storage but it's basically reality stuff, TV, yeah. right? And and so they drift away from what they do. And this happens again and again. And it's kind of a natural business cycle thing, right? Where, you know, something like VH1 was originally called Video Hits 1. And then yeah. they just rebrand themselves to VH1 and they do anything. And even like sci-fi, you know, rebranded. They were called the Sci-Fi Channel. They rebranded to like SYFY. And then they just can kind of put anything on there. There was this time when the Weather Channel um, started trying to change their content. <laughs> And they started doing a Friday night movie oh, yeah. that was related to the weather. Well, Twister. Twister. Twi- Twister. It was just <laughs> Twister, Twister every Friday night. Well, they had the Perfect Storm. Perfect Storm, um, Twister, any of those volcano movies I think they that did, they had. Like, I guess volcano, they counted as well. Joe versus yeah. the volcano. Nice. nice. <laughs> but, but there was such a sort of outcry at this because it just felt so weird. Yeah. But you know how the people behind the scenes kind of were like... Uh, we got we got to do something to up our views, our ratings. The guys upstairs want us to hit a new hit new new audience. You know what can we do? I know we do. We're called the Weather Channel. Um, but look at these other channels who are called you know the the Knitting Channel. They're doing stuff about with with you know they've got the clangers on there now. They're just because they were knitted or whatever. Do you know what I mean? I think this this also happens with with pop stars, right? These the, these record agencies and people who run the show realize that the big demographic is this certain group of people, and they make the majority of their content for those. And that is why we have the Doja Cat and the 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 all this all this weird stuff, which I don't like or understand, but I know that it, it hits the what majority is Doja demographic. Cat? Is it is it what I think? <laughs> She's it like is. a rap. Do we want to know? Uh, <laughs> She's just like a rapper, but like, oh, like all a, of them. Okay. I thought it was like, like a Jingle Cats kind of thing. There's like a there's like a rapper called Becky G and Little Bibby and right. Ellie Fan and R C and Juicy J and all these yeah. people, and they're all just paper route Kesha. Everyone knows Kesha, right? Yeah, you know the people that of that oover. Yeah, <laughs> who I don't understand. Did you never will oeuvre? understand? 
Yes. Nice. Oeuvre. Okay. It's an oeuvre, right? It's an oeuvre, you know, yeah. It's a TikTok, TikTok styled thing. You know, you hear the music playing in the background of a TikTok and you're like, oh, but, but and it'll be in Splatoon 2. Yeah, it's probably in Splatoon but, 2, honestly. But like. I, I mean, I, I just, I'm the, I'm, it's not aimed at me. I'm listening to the Longest John's album. Do you know what I mean? I'm listening to weird stuff that Spotify throws up. Yeah. And I think as we grow, you're right about this, this idea of, people being super famous because i think there were always back in the day yeah. um people who were even in like before the war kind of thing people who were in the newspapers as the most famous people yes. in the world you know yeah, you, had, uh, you had this figures, right? sort of sense of like a you know like high society and they, they, it, they, they were limited though right you had like hollywood um and um and maybe a couple of others or whatever but nowadays you have all sorts right like you have like in our world, for example, which I, I know is is a small part of the like overall world, but like you know, like on YouTube or, or Twitch or whatever, you have you know like you, the top ten YouTubers or top ten streamers and, and stuff, you know, and you you could argue that they're quite quite famous, quite popular. They have lots of viewers. They have lots of people who follow them and stuff. But like, will they ever get as big as like, say, Michael, Michael Jackson, Jackson did in no. the eighties? Probably exactly. not, because I think he was. I think the he landscape was at the tail end is totally different. Of that mega star, mega kind of. Yeah. Everyone had to. Everyone was cut because there weren't so many. It was kind of at the start of cable TV and things yeah, like this, was, where there yeah. were like. So that was the explosion, really, where people were able to choose, right? Because before that, there weren't that many channels, there weren't that many sources, there weren't that yeah. many places to access your, right, but your content. So here's, here's my question. Here's my question. Go on. If people, and this is something I saw quite a funny tweet the other day, that people, people, um, people thought that lack of access to information was what was making people stupid. But it turns right. out that access to information has made people even stupider. So if we're right. saying that um, the reason that Michael Jackson was so famous was because there weren't as many avenues f for which in which people could consume media, then how did he get so famous? It's a bit of a paradox to say that now that it's even easier to consume media, to watch stuff, that we don't have anyone as famous as that. Now, that, that either means that we've diluted the pool of potential famous people but he was famous from the point of the jackson five like when he was a kid yeah all the way up until his death it would be pretty easy to say that michael jackson remained the most famous person um for you know for what you're reason. right i think it was this viral story that kept on giving you know every stage yeah, of his was, life was there was a controversy in the news for sure which which yeah. would have which would have fed into it but again he never stopped being in the news right yeah but I think I, I think um, again it was such a it, it was so simplistic back then as well. You 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 your PR people um, sold this idea of you to the like you know commercial radio or to like MTV or whatever, and you got massive playtime in order to shift units, and that was it. But nowadays there's there's so much more to it. You know what I mean, and I think that's. But the that's PR why it's people different. are much cleverer now. Like I don't you, know if, if they're if much think cleverer. About, it's just changed a lot. No, they've they've got so much more experience, and they. If you think about the growth of that whole idea of yeah. carefully managing the public of a, appearance of a person has grown as yeah. fame has now become a thing that a lot of people seek. Especially, there's a whole industry for it, and they were all learning from what went before. So yeah. I think in terms of. All aspects of pu public relations and spin and all the rest of it has become much more advanced and much more sort of honed, like most other things do over time. So it should be even the the skill set should be even more powerful in terms of making someone famous and having all these channels to pump them into and and promote them. And I just think it's interesting because you'll have people who seem to be mega famous, but then they kind of drop off like, bam, there's a new thing that's come along. Well, that's yeah, because there's right. so many, like, again, it's a much larger pool, right? And, and I think it, it makes it harder, you know, like, I mean, it's like a lot of people want to become streamers or want to become YouTubers or whatever. And I and I, I, I guess that a lot of them run into the exact same problem where it's just it's hard to grow. Right. And that's because there's just so much more out there that people are already uh, watching or used to watching or a style that they become used to watching or whatever. 
And like, I think, you know, coming back to this idea of like a PR person or whatever, I had imagined that those jobs are really hard nowadays because you're, you're not looking at one big chunky demographic. You're, you're trying to like look at lots of little ones, I feel like, you know, because there's so much choice. Everybody just wants and uh, wants to be unique with what they're uh, no, I, watching I think it's and just, listening well, to and stuff it's, as well. It's homogenization though, because every fucking Twitter feed and social media feed, Aldi, Tesco, Pringles, KFC, they all behave the same. Like there's some 20 year old meme lord posting emojis and edgy things and like, oh, um, oh, We're check out like the you. new Pringly Bees just just released. Hashtag Pringle Breeze. Do you know what I mean? Like, and they'll yeah. fucking put a crying emoji in there. They're all the fucking same because that appeals to the largest demographic. And I feel like I feel like that's it's become kind of it's, you know you're not gonna get like words as originals social media being like <laughs> don't understand all these old fucking stupid <laughs> social medias of the other people. Do you know what I mean? It's not gonna be <laughs> the proper personality. Words as originals gonna be like oh pop popping rads me grandpa's to give him a Werther's, Werther B's, a Werther's, Werther's O's. Do you know what I mean? It was all stupid and hashtags and, and like the same... When the Werther's they dissolves. They have to behave like a 20-year-old hipster. When the Werther's dissolves, but she keep on sucking. <laughs> Man, I feel like a like a like a like a sexually charged campaign for Werther's is what that brand needs right now. Honestly, like just get some just just get some like uh, some naked chicks on there, but like a Werther's is just uh, covering up their nipples or something. Yeah, like calendar. You know girls. what I mean? Like that's just one idea. There's like a lot of things that they could do. We 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 talked before about when when you look at TV viewing figures, uh, they were much higher because there were less channels. So yeah. I wonder if the fact that there are so many people out there being shoved in your face as famous, it's almost hard to tell which ones are famous for a good reason and which ones you're just kind of into well, it, for a bit. And then I mean, look at like, a, like these shows like uh, on Channel 4 and Channel 3, mostly it, it feels like, you know, celebrity dinner date, celebrities dating, celebrity mansion makeover, celebrity... Man, I haven't even heard of half of the people that they're saying are celebrities. I know. And like and when it comes to it, it's like, oh yeah, he was a contestant in a reality show. Okay, but come on, that's not actually a celebrity. Like get like, you know, if if you had like fucking Stevie Wonder on there or something, I'd be like, <laughs> Okay, yeah, I know who that is. Like that's yeah. an actual celebrity. But like well, but then again, like there's different terms though, isn't there? Like, you know, they have like mega star and stuff like this, you know what I mean? And and star. Like if you're a star, I think it's different to being a celebrity. I think a celebrity yeah. could be anyone who's ever done anything that got them All in right, the news. So who do we think is a superstar nowadays? Like who do you think we could actually look at and say they're an actual superstar? I guess I guess what I want to know is who those people in the jungle of, you know, the Amazonian rainforest, you know, you you make your three day trek out there through like snakes and mosquitoes and shit yeah. and you get there to the village and they're all like you know oh what's the latest news about and then they fucking say i don't know Leon, Le Lionel messi or whatever like who is who is the big probably like eminem the... right eminem's probably big enough to be to be known i i'd imagine Dude. that a tribe out eminem. there in south Eminem, yeah, he's he's pretty big. Man. Come on, like, man. Uh, he's he's Come not my on, cup of dude. tea, but how much sticking power has he got? That's the thing, because you know you look at these old people like 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 Bing Crosby, Frank Sinatra, Cary Grant. You know, certain film stars from the war era. Yeah. You know, how much sticking power did they have? Well, if into not, the okay, sort of maybe 60s, not Eminem, 70s. but I mean, I can't. Maybe Rihanna or some someone Let, like right, that. So let's take Drake, who's probably one of the most famous people Drake, yeah. around at the moment, right? I mean, he owns a private fucking jumbo jet, right? The guy's right. made a fortune. I mean, so does John Travolta. Like, come on, let's. I know, let's be but real I'm, I'm just saying, like, Drake is a, a big deal. Like, he's certainly. Yeah. When when he puts an album out or whatever, yeah. Kanye West, Kanye, yeah. Although I I can't stand the guy, I would say in a in a very similar way to Michael Jackson. Even the weirdo negative press about him is keeping his name out there, and yeah. you kind of want to know what he's going to do next because he's such a nut. Yeah, I think Kanye. Drake, those are two guys that you would say are up there in terms of what we would consider modern superstars. Sure. But I, I don't think that either of them really would have the same longevity that Michael Jackson would have in terms of literally being famous his entire life and people around the world knowing who he is. Yeah. And having, I, do you think part of it was he had a, an iconic something, the glove? Sign he had the signature dance move the dance as well, move, right? right? So yeah. And he was a walk, very good glove. dancer. He when you see that guy dancer. move, it's it's unbelievable. It's like, uh, right. it doesn't even seem human. But his like, songs are also incredibly popular. I mean, Thriller is yeah. like the best-selling album. Hold on. Yeah. What? Shut the fuck up. If your dog is barking, 
Tell them to shut up. What is wrong with people? <laughs> Sorry. It drives me up the wall. Hang on, wait, cut that, Tom. No, don't cut <laughs> that, Tom. We Listen don't want to, me, Flex Tom, to be the I angry I man this, this in podcast. here. I want this in here, all right? If your dog is out the back of your house, it's just going, rah, 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 rah. Have a fucking word with it. Go and say no. It don't need bark. something. Go inside. Yeah. No, they're just yipping at the, like a bird or the sky or they heard another dog. But don't let them just do it. It's an objectionable noise. Okay, yeah. good. Uh, Thank you, Tom. On Kanye, this week he posted a picture on his Instagram of a piece of A4 paper on which he wrote, wrote a little thing with a Sharpie. It says, my focus is on building real products in the real world, real food, real clothes, real shelter. Do not ask me to do a fucking NFT. <laughs> Yay. And that's that's, that's what Kanye? he wrote. Oh, that's Kanye wrote to him. That. God, uh, he's actually. I actually thought he would have been all over of that shit. No, so fair enough. It sounds like uh, I never thought I'd find myself agreeing with Kanye. Yeah. God bless you. You've gone up in my estimation. All the shit you've done that uh, I can't forgive. But that, that one you can't thing, remember. I invested in uh, five M- NFTs this week alone, so I'm gonna have to yeah. say I disagree with uh, Kanye. And, What'd you get? Um, I bought a uh, animated uh, GIF of a <laughs> uh, cat, <laughs> of an um, ant, a, a cat. Oh, and, a cat! Um, and I also bought a. Uh, Go on, some look around your room and see what you can tracer spot. fan art. Um, okay. What else did I get? Some lots of Overwatch porn. I, oh, I feel yeah, like okay. it's going to get even bigger than it already is. So, you gotta make sure. Want to hit sure. the ground floor, yeah? Um, with all that, with all those, with the those images that now I I now own. Congrats, proud proud owner. Thank you very much. Can Thanks. you send me a copy? Thanks. I'm the gonna will them to uh, my children one day as well, so that they can enjoy them too. Kids. Here's my whole collection of NFTs. Kids, I've got I've got a few minutes to live. I wanted to. <laughs> Divide my bored apes up between you while I still have the chance. You get the one with the eye patch. Oh, thank goodness. Thank you, Papa. You you can have the one smoking a pipe. Oh, I didn't want that one. Tough. You're stuck with it. Tough. <laughs> In a very weak one. Fuck Tough. you. It's, it's your ape now, bitch. Tough shit, idiot. Tough. You've got that ape. You get what you're given. Take good care of him. Um... <laughs> Fucking so hell. in the news this week, uh, there was a, a teenager, Jack Sweeney, set up a Twitter account right. that automatically tracks Elon's private jet. Oh, nice! And That's where good. he where he flies where around. he flies to. Yeah, because it's all public available data, right? Yeah, of course. You could just uh, like Plane Finder, right? You could probably just yeah. figure it out by looking on Plane Finder. However, Elon asked uh, him to shut it down. Right. Uh, Offered him five thousand dollars to shut it down. Five thousand dollars. Yeah, and the kid said, said, "How about fifty? Yeah, and he said, "Well, how about nothing?" <laughs> the kid said, "How about fifty? And, and Elon said, "How about nothing?" Yeah. So basically, and then he said, "Can I have an internship?" But at- uh- I'll give Elon five thousand dollars if he shuts down his mouth. Uh, from ever talking again, five thousand dollars. <laughs> fucking idiot. what an idiot! What a fucking idiot that guy is. But the kid said uh, he's my idol. Like loads of people love Elon Musk. Like he, they love him. Well, that's, I, I don't really understand him. why. Yeah, yeah. He actually is doing it out of passion. Obviously. It's not great, is it, to no. have your no? It is. Your... It's 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 a very private thing. No, it's not. You can look it up on Sky Tracker. It's all very public. Yeah, people yeah. have been doing it for 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 a while. I I've mean, people, people, you're not meant to tune into the uh, the frequencies for the for the planes, but loads of people do. They tune, I understand tune into the trucker frequencies a lot yeah. too, don't <laughs> we they? We used to do that. Too. Uh, uh, breaker, breaker, one nine. So, uh, this wh- is uh, Randy, uh, Roger, <laughs> Randy, 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 Roger, uh, cruising down the I thirty five. It's looking fine. Randy, looking fine. this is Becky over in uh, <laughs> blue, blue truck to your left. C- could you move over? Because I'm stuck on the inside. Lane. <laughs> Becky, you can go to hill. Uh breaker, uh breaker four twenty sixty nine. I'm coming in hot and heavy on the uh freeway. Um I'll save you, Becky. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. There was a toy when I was a kid in the eighties. It was the Batman Bat um r- radio, Bat Ham Radio. And yeah. it was an actual working receiver and transmitting radio. With all Batman branding and all the rest of that. Yeah. And you could tune in to the frequencies that cab drivers and truckers <laughs> used. And we would go to my mate's house. We would have been about seven. And we would tune in to the trucker frequencies, listen in. And when they were talking and we knew they were talking, we'd just go. 
<laughs> just do fart noises. And they'd be like, go up to, these kids piss me off. And they'd, they'd go up a couple, we'd follow, they'd try and find them again. Uh, you guys are idiots. Uh. <laughs> For like hours. Uh, break it one nine. We've got a farter on the this. line. Uh. <laughs> we got another farter. I'll track you down. I remember as well, as well I borrowed a, my friend at, at school. This is, where, I, I don't know why I enjoyed this so much. But when I, this would have been about 14, 15 in the UK, maybe a little younger. He had a ham radio and he would he would lend it out. He had like five or six of them. He built a massive antenna in his back garden and there's a limit on how high. Any any ham enthusiasts out there can feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but there is a limit on how high a privately owned antenna can be. So if you hide it, you can get away with a bigger one. So he hid his in a tree. So it was sort of sticking up alongside this tree and up into the branches so you couldn't really see it from the road because apparently that there there is a limit on how high they can be because otherwise the frequency is too strong um and i think if you use too much power and everything you can you know you can pick up stuff you shouldn't be picking up i guess i don't know anyway we would get let's get that and people all over dorset would be using this instead of using a, a phone they would fucking call each other on, on the radio and they're nice. so much cheaper you could just listen in on their fucking <laughs> conversations and occasionally oh. chip in and they would always say the same thing Listen here, young man. I, I've got a button here that will blow up your radio if you don't change frequency. That's what they would threaten you with. They would oh always my claim fucking God. they had a button. That's like the early internet thing where people would be like, I'm going to fucking come around. To, I, I know, I'm going to ban you. I'm going to yep. come around to your house and I know where you live. I can track your it IP. Is, it yeah. sounds like uh, the movie, uh, like Diary of a Wimpy Kid Summer Vacation, it, like where everybody is using radios. Like, oh, okay, yeah. Tim, I'm going to bed now. Okay, night, Mindy. They've got their fucking <laughs> radios next to their bed and stuff, like uh, or like the Wonder Years. It sounds like something out of right. the Wonder Years. Yeah, it was. It was okay, fun. Kevin. I'm just gonna get some shut you eye. You listen, now. you little shit. Are you the fucker who's got that barking yapping dog in his garden? <laughs> come over here. I'm gonna fucking wring your neck, you little cunt. What are you fucking doing? Oh, sorry, Mister. I was just saying goodnight to Mindy. Now listen here, you <laughs> little shit. <laughs> Man, can I, um can we change uh, topic uh, very quickly? Not because I'm uncomfortable with it, but because I would like to talk about that fucking documentary on Netflix, The Puppet Master. That that uh, Robert I didn't want to watch it. It looks scary. Oh yeah, man, it's not scary. It's it, fuck. It's it's kind of infuriating at parts, in my opinion. Like, um, it's 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 crazy. Like, it's. I, it's it's bizarre. It's kind of unbelievable, and um, and it it feels like you're watching an episode of Rip Off Britain, but like uh, like an extended version or something. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, this it's is wild. something. Do you remember that old that other that other thing on on Netflix that was the podcast um, where it was it was that that scam guy who sort of infiltrated his way into these these women's lives, sort of met them on dating sites. Oh, that was it, like the Tinder Tinder something. Yeah, what's Tind he? The, what's that fucking called? Tinder guy um, something. God, I can't. Well, he remember. was he was he, actually uh, convicted, right? Like in yeah, the end, like he he yeah, went he, he's he well, went to jail. No, he didn't. No, oh, he no, didn't. No, oh, right. No, okay. no spoilers. Shows the, how much I uh, know about the subject, but um, God, it was quite. Famous famous as well um i can't remember what it was called shit my brain sorry anyway there's this sort of thing where there's these exploitative sort of good-looking middle-aged guys who kind of prey on middle-aged women on dating yeah, sites yeah what's the, it, the terms like coercive something but it it was not illegal to do this stuff up until what like, i don't think it still it like is 2015 and, and it, they, or they're something. kind of i mean there's obviously l low level it's always done to a low level there's these good looking guys who just want to sort of have a new girlfriend every month yeah, yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. and so they kind of work their way through lots of different women but dating, some of them dating sites are, seem to be some sort of like ugh. grooming ground for them for sure nowadays but there's so definitely this, a lot of creepy people out there but this guy particularly this, this guy that the documentary is about it's not it's not it's not really creepy it's just a bit weird so he his thing is that he tells people that he's an mi5 agent which is like oh yeah they, i think uh, louis theroux did an investigation with someone uh, straight away though like if somebody Robson. told you that they were an mi5 agent you would know okay like this this person well, is insane like, yeah, but no, it, no 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 uh mi5 agent is ever going to tell you that they're an mi5 agent right like straight up like there, I, there's just I, I no think, way i think blaming people for being gullible is no 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 I think, i'm not sorry i i don't mean to blame people for being gullible because the 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 hardships that they've had to go through with all they're of this lonely. like a lot of people are very lonely as well and i think if you, if you finally meet someone and they seem really nice and charismatic yeah. and most con men are very likable sure that's why I they're know. able it, to do 
it. It's it, so the, I, I the feel whole terrible thing is, watching. Yeah, this stuff. it's it's awful. Like this 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 one woman who was a student when uh, she first got mixed up with this guy. So his whole thing was he was working at a at a pub nearby to this like uh, agricultural school and this uh, the one one of the students was was regularly going in and just sort of got to know him over time and then one day he's like oh by the way uh i i i this isn't my real job i'm not really who i say i am i'm an mi5 agent and i'm here uh investigating possible like uh ira cells like in in the local area and we think that like you're in danger and there's an ira cell working in your school and I, I'm going to help you. I'm going to train you in like combat and stuff. And then, you know, we're going to we're going to sort this out. And so this guy had two roommates, two female roommates living uh, with him. And so they just decide one day, all right, we got to get out of here. Like the situation's critical. Uh, you know, the mission aborted. Uh, we're going to be found out and nobody's safe anymore. So you're going to have to tell your roommates that you're terminally ill to convince them to come on this road trip with us and uh and then we're going to we're going to flee here and we're going to get you to a safe spot and figure it out sort of thing my my superiors are telling me to do this so he's like okay fine I'll do that so he he does it he tells the roommates that he's like he's got terminal cancer and he's got this bucket list of places he wants to see all over the UK and uh, let's go now because I don't have long left to live or whatever. So these girls are like, well, shit, yeah, okay, let's go. Like, I can't believe you're going to die. This is so sad, whatever. And um, so they hit the road across the UK and this goes on for 10, ten, ten years. Yeah, this goes sorry, on for. You cut out. <laughs> it goes on for 10 He's still cut out. I think that's a noise gate problem. Uh, might be my. I might might be uh, overemphasizing the ten into the mic. Ten years it goes on for, and um, and he he fleeces them and their families for hundreds of thousands of pounds in the process as well. Always yeah. like they go to like a safe house. They just live like he just controls every aspect of their life, you know, like where they it's work. It's kind of weird because his what, strategy is really to get them to work a job and then pay him. Yes. Do you see what I mean? He's, they're kind of like prostitutes or something, and he's like a pimp. He's done it's a weird. bit of research ahead as well, where he knows that the family has a bit of money or some inheritance or something that he can then convince them to sort of pay out to 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 one of the the, the people that he's coercing or whatever yeah and um it's, it's insane it's, strange. it's just insane but being being it's being trapped to these sort of eventually you know he starts moving on to you know women and stuff and and kind of taking their money and yeah you know or getting them massively in debt you know for yes. example like he'll 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 date a woman and then get massively in debt to the point of like you know remortgaging their house making loads of money and then usually running off with them or them eventually or breaking up with them eventually and leaving them with you know but the, it, the, the, the craziest thing is how he manages to sort of isolate them from all of their family and well i think ones, that's like you know? the biggest red flag isn't yeah. it like if 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 you he if, just cuts them meet... off completely it's crazy i mean I, I can see where it's coming from though like you know as these these women they meet this guy he's exciting he's not he's good looking he takes them on adventures he gives them a new sort of lease of life they go on holiday to france and do all these things and yeah. it's exciting and he's, he's a spy as well and yeah, he's like yeah. a dream boat compared to her previous husband who was a builder and all the horrible yeah. kids who who hate me blah 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 you know and 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 so she you get wrapped up in this fantasy right and you're willing to sort of overlook these red flags when they come up and and not react and you know everyone and uh, kind of like a lot of people's families react so vehemently that it makes people dig their heels in and it makes people kind of stubborn and i think that the main story is about this sort of these two kids who are sort of i think like 20 now kind of their their mum has kind of gone off with this that's guy, this right yeah man. and they haven't talked to her for years and stuff mm, and they were yeah. really close to her like imagine your mum just meets somebody one day goes off with them he he sort of socially manipulates your house situation to a point where your kids just want to move out because it's it's impossible like he's not i don't know if if he's being like physically abusive in any of these cases but definitely like mentally manipulative and abusive and stuff so these kids just eventually think i have to move out or whatever and then he completely isolates the the mom from like the rest of the family and she's 
still alive. Like she's out there, but she just like doesn't interact with her family whatsoever now. Like it's sorry, P Flax. I know this is stressing you out. What it's stressing you out talking about this stuff? No, I, I, um, I'm not. I'm just listening. I haven't seen it. Yeah, you should. I don't know why. Well, I mean, I don't know if it's your thing, but like it's, it's, it's. I try to avoid but... true crime stuff. Yeah, because. Like, I, if it's a re- like, I, I enjoyed the one about the Night Stalker. The, I thought that that documentary was quite interesting. The one about the, you know, how they caught him. Yeah. Like, I generally like the ones where they catch someone. Yeah. Um, because I don't know. It's just it's horrible to think that these uh, that there are people out there who like. Oh, so he, I, we, I was talking about the motorcycle thieves the other week, right? And they they nicked yeah. that motorcycle. That's just the kind of opportunist crime where you know that there's light fingered assholes out there who will just nick something if they see it and they think they can get away with it. They yeah. didn't even sell it. They just fucking they were just bored, stupid, destructive kids who went out and did this. Whatever. People like that have always existed, and it's annoying. But they're unlikely to track someone for years and bring about their downfall. Do you know what I mean? Like, this isn't going to be the kind of soul-destroying, life-changing event someone nick in your motorcycle. Like, it's going to be annoying, and it might make you trust people a bit less for a while, and maybe you get a new lock or whatever. And it's a pain in the ass. I- I've had stuff nicked, and it's it's really fucking annoying. But when you have your entire life invalidated by someone, you, you, you don't know who, who you can trust. You know, I, th- yeah. I think it's awful. And I, I don't find... Normally, these people don't get caught so much as they just keep doing it for years and then finally it catches up with them. But there's no sort of police force out there track of them. There's no manhunt. There's no detective to talk to. It just no. unravels. Well, and so in this I case... I just find it so, so depressing that, that they live their lives like that. Day to day, they're waking yeah, up yeah. and thinking, which lie do I tell today? And I just think that's, that's it's really, really sad. Well, it's, like, it, yeah. it's, it's like a... It's Dirty John is the one I was thinking of. That, were, that I listened to the podcast of back in the day. I found Dirty it. John. Yeah. Dirty John, I, I, and it, it was. I think, I, 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 you can kind of see how these guys trap themselves in it, though, right? As well, like it, it becomes something that's so easy to them, and oh, I'm not, I'm, I, you know, I'm not really hurting anyone. I don't know, I, I don't know. It's like weird how it's kind of they don't often don't get in trouble for it either. Like it's no, it's not illegal, no, to do to do these some of these sort of the things where they convince someone to give them money or yeah, well, you know, yeah, it's it's very hard to it's very hard to prove any any sort of illegality there, right? and it makes it scary for 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 everyone else as well because everyone also thinks like, oh my god, is my partner being manipulative in some way or like, you know, like I don't know, like it can put. It can put like a, a negative spin on everything you think about if you're too worried about people out there being being monsters. I don't know. I guess it's a sliding scale, though. Like, I'm sure there's lots of people who are s- to small scale manipulative, you know? Yeah. And I think you just have to look, you have to kind of, you just, just have to, I think you have to have a, the ability to step back and, and, and have other people around you and, and make sure you're not being distanced from from family and friends, you know, that kind of stuff, like you said, like is trust the people that you've known all your life rather than the person that you've just met on Tinder who's promising you the world kind of thing. Yeah. Um, like a sexy Ferrari and, and stuff. <laughs> Sexy he bought. Uh, yeah. He he bought the uh, this this woman that he's uh, that he met on the dating app or whatever. His big thing was that he was like rich and he had a lot of money and and everything. And uh, so he bought he bought her like a brand new Audi when they first got together. And she was like, "Wow, I can't believe like this top of the line brand new Audi." And then it it transpires years later. They look into it, and like he just financed it in her name. <laughs> oh <laughs> like, man! So she's just been like, I don't know, man. It's crazy. but they ran away from all the debts, right? Yeah, they so just they did. Yeah, they fleed. I, they just. I don't think they even live in the country anymore, right? Because they. No. I think they just created so many debts and problems and stuff that they just had to leave. Um, it's wild. It's 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 insane. Like maybe, maybe watch it and see what you think. It's like it's not that long. It's like three three parts. It's like three. Well, three I've been, hours I've been watching. Uh, I watched Men in Black uh, yesterday uh, with my uh, with my youngest. She had the original it. one. Yeah, the original one, which right. I think is like the other the other two are, are not worth watching. May you don't you don't rate Men in Black International? No, sadly not. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Uh, so we watched it. I said to her, "Come watch a movie with me." She was like, "No." I was like, "Come on." She was like, "Fine." Stomped downstairs, and as soon as it started, she was hooked. Because you know the scene where the, the they open the van up, and there's all the the guys going across the border, and one of them doesn't speak Spanish, and uh, Kay is sort of you know. Eventually, they they remove the disguise, and it's like an alien holding a human head on a stick, and then he runs around, and they blast him, and he covers the state trooper in goop, 
That's the opening scene. She was like, I've got to know more. She's like, so many questions. Like, one of the things I don't really explain is um, Vincent D'Onofrio's character is like a giant insect in a human skin suit, right? Like, he kills that guy, takes yeah. his skin off and wears it. And bugs keep coming out of his sleeves and stuff, like cockroaches. And she couldn't explain. She was like, why does the... Why do bugs keep coming out of him? Like she really, she was really grossed out watching it back again. It is quite a gross. It is, movie. yeah. It's pretty gross. And, yeah. yeah, it is. Like there's, like there's lots of violence in it. Lots of quite gory stuff. Like um, things getting cut in half and people. Like there's a a, a point that I I didn't really um thought about how scary it is as a movie. But there's a scene where he stuffs someone in a shelf and their legs are all folded backwards and they're dead. And they've got like a really horrified expression on their face. She was really shocked by that. And I was like, yeah, that is really pretty fucking scary to put in a in a kid's film. Like I was really kind of shocked. But then I yeah. thought, is Men in Black meant to be a kid's film? I think it is. I don't know, man. But when Men in Black came out, I remember when it was released, I went to see it at a drive thru. <clears throat> oh, that would be awesome. I love I'd love it was, to get yeah, it. Was, it was pretty good, yeah. It was like even even at the time, drive throughs were like a thing of the past, but they there was a local one that was just like kind of you know catering to like nostalgia or whatever it was open and it was like kind of a i don't know if it's still open or not but it was one of those it was like you know for people who really like going to drive throughs from from you know days days gone or whatever so yeah we went to go see it at a drive through it was pretty it was pretty good you had to like oh, you had to like hook enough. up the thing to your car stereo and you oh, sit, yeah, yeah. sit in your car and watch a movie <laughs> it's pretty funny you know what i i, I remember for anyone that that's uh that we used to watch the Flintstones when they were a kid. So older people, they don't show it on TV anymore, I don't think. But I would watch the Flintstones because there was, you know, fuck all else on and Flintstones is on, whatever. <laughs> Good reason I mean, to watch the Flintstones. It's not a funny show. Like, Why you do you watch like it, it's show? not well, funny. Well, fucking nothing fuck else. All else. <laughs> what, 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 what fucking else am I going to do? What's fucking Flintstones? <laughs> and at the start of it, they go to the drive through in the car and the, the drive through waitress comes over and she puts a giant, like, it's either a, a, the ribs of an animal, like that they're meant to eat, or a giant shell. I could never quite decide. And I think it's meant to be ribs. Like they order the ribs. And of course, the ribs are of a brontosaurus or whatever. You know, they bring over this huge set of ribs and the car tips over. But I was like, where are they? That they're eating outside? I'd never been to a drive through. I, I mean, growing up, you know, in New York, there weren't drive throughs that I knew of. And in the UK, there definitely weren't drive throughs. It wasn't a thing. When you go out into more rural areas in America, drive through cinemas were much more common. And I'm sure. Sure that I mean the Flintstones was made in the fifties, so I was like, uh, "What? Where are they? Like this way? They're eating outside? Is that because it's the past? Like what is this giant thing they put on the side of the car?" But it might have been the speakers. I don't know. It was very confusing. But that was my only ex exposure to drive-in theaters with the fucking <laughs> Flintstones. Yeah. I didn't explain it. Didn't explain it well at all. No, but it's a very North American thing, right? Like, yeah, and, and an old North American thing at that. Like, yeah. But the Flintstones came out in like the sixties, right? Know, they're so, still going, right? Yeah, I think some in some places they're still going. Yeah. It's interesting how much the world has changed on some elements so quickly. You yeah, know, like some things like Men in Black. I mean, yeah, sure, it's 25 years old, but it does feel, I'm sure, like a lot of that movie felt like completely out of touch and out of fashion and old and dated, right? Yeah. Like, because cause, cause things just change so fast. Yeah. No, she, she honestly, at no point was it, like the only thing that was missing was, I mean, they had mobile phones because they were the men in black. Yeah. So it really didn't look that dated. I mean, it, it, in a weird way, it, it just didn't. Like, I wasn't watching and thinking, oh man, that's a blast from the past. You know, n none of that. Like it, it pretty much felt like this movie could have come out recently. Even some of the effects were really were pretty good. Yeah, go okay. go ahead and watch it. And I mean, my youngest is extremely observant about things like this, and she's like, "There's a scene where they're in a police station and they're interviewing uh, Will Smith's character about what happened with the cephalopod that he chased down," and she's like, "Pause it, pause it." And I pause the film. She's like, "There, that's the coffee cup that I see everywhere." I said, "What do you mean?" And there is a coffee cup. This is a the Greek coffee cup. It's it's a New York thing. It's a blue coffee cup and it says, we are happy to serve you or something like that on it. And it's got kind of Greek uh, artistry like style on it. writing. Yeah, sort of thing. And, yeah. And, but it's also got the kind of little pillars and all the rest of it. She said that that was the same coffee cup they had in the new Spider-Man movie. So who spots that kind of stuff? Like she, she does, she spots that kind of stuff. But she saw this coffee cup and she saw the same one in Men in Black. She's like, what is going on? I've never seen that coffee cup. What's the deal? So I looked it up and it's quite it's a relatively interesting story but essentially these were the coffee cups that all the independent coffee stores chains used they sold like half a billion of them at their peak um 
And then they started to peter out when Starbucks came along in the 90s and Starbucks coffee, you know, had their own coffee cups, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And all the independent chains, they still use them, but they're much, much rarer than they used to be. But if you ever see them in a movie, those coffee cups, and you think, what fucking chain is that? I, th I thought, um, is it Dunkin' Donuts? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that would have the orange and, and pink writing on it, say Dunkin' Donuts, so I didn't know what it was. But there you go. So it was like the standard independent coffee shop, coffee cup that they would all have for years. It became like a, a, a New York um, sort of, what would be the word? Not a trend, just a staple, I guess. It was like the, this thing that they all had. So if you ever yeah. see them in a movie, yeah. that's what that is. You can go ahead and look it up. Well, also, there's the, the I always remember, we had these things called the, the these Duralex glass drink, water drinking sort of glasses, you know, that you see or used to see absolutely fucking everywhere. Um, they were basically, I think it's called the, the Gigoin glass but it had like a little number in it uh the you know you drink your water and it would have a number i think everyone in the uk and um, maybe like on the continent as well it, there was this little glass tumbler and it was everywhere and you still see them everywhere like mm. in restaurants and in like in, it had a little number and that number apparently refers to the um like num the machine oh. that makes that like the number of the you know, number machine number 14 so that if there were any faults they'd know, they'd know yeah which one's going wrong but it's um it's it's kind of it was it was just this interesting thing that you just I was just because I read it this week as well like and they sold to um, Pyrex who were the big right, right. kind of heated glass you know shatter resistant glass and their whole company only sold for like four million euros <laughs> <laughs> and I was like man they've been going making these glasses that are like super iconic and and you've got like I don't know to me that doesn't seem like much because of the numbers that you see Blizzard and stuff selling for right but, right you know yeah. something in the real world that yeah, we Bungie all... now as well eh Sony are gonna buy Bungie no, and, for a and news couple of billion are like yeah it's like it's just it's just it, was, it felt like a just a small amount of money bearing in mind like how you know it's been going for 77 yeah, years yeah. and it's, it's got like 200 a, it, employees it's still a tidy little sum though like maybe hmm. maybe they're not making as much as they used to or something but it's, it feels interesting but that's a genuine valuation of a company i mean i yeah. guess you look at the assets and their sales and their profits and yeah. that's how much the company's they worth they probably than actually saying... have stock of products and but stuff but to me it's so all, almost wonderful that there's a company that's been going for 77 years making basically the same thing with basically the same people in basically the same place <laughs> yeah. selling to basically the same people yeah. yes. for 77 years and I don't know like there's something nice about that like we're always going to need glasses to drink out of as humans right like even in in the in the hundreds of years of the future, people are still going to want to drink water out of these things, and they're they're a classic design. They're cheap. They're like they they don't shatter and like cut you, or maybe they fucking do. I don't know. I've never broken one. They they seem like they seem like cool things, and I just thought that was a man. You should a nice get a job thing. there as a salesman for them. Like I feel like you'd be really good. <laughs> well, they 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 maybe it's too late now. <laughs> uh, another sort of wholesome story I read this week was that there was this kid in in America, this eight year old in Idaho, who took his handwritten book into the local public library yeah. and put it in the children's section, right, and then. When they came back, uh, someone had already loaned it out, um, and, and now there's a wait list for it. Oh, right. <laughs> so he wrote his book. He, it's called The Adventures of Dylan Helbig's Christmas. He spelled Christmas wrong. Right. But it's a very wholesome, wholesome story. Do you want to hear a sad was, story? That was nice. Go on, you hear about a, a sad company. story. So the, the oldest company, the, or the longest running company in existence, Congo Gumi, apologize to anyone that speaks Japanese, for my pronunciation there, was founded in the year 578. Wow. Okay. It's a construction company in Japan. It was the longest running company in history, 1400 years. Right. It was a family owned construction company tracing its origins to 578 when Prince Shotoku invited three craftsmen to build some stuff and they were like, we should make a company. And they were like, oh, this won't last. And then it did, 1,444 years. Then the company fell on hard times and went yeah. into liquidation in January 2006 and was oh, purchased no. by the Takamatsu Construction Group. Oh. Before its liquidation, it had as few as 100 employees. And in 2005, its annual revenue was only $70 million, but it specialized in building Buddhist temples. And oh, right. yeah, the, the 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 last president was Masa Kazu Congo, the fortieth to lead the firm, the fortieth Congo, the fortieth person of his lineage to lead the firm. 
And I just think that, that, that is, is amazing. amazing. That is amazing. 1,400 yeah. years. Yeah. The, the oldest running one in uh, Europe is St. Peter. Now, hold on a sec. Stifts Culinarium, <laughs> which is a restaurant uh, within the walls of St. Peter's Abbey in Salzburg, Austria, and it's been operating since 803 AD. Jesus Christ. Which is ridiculous. And then there's another one in Germany, Staffelter Hof, which is a, brew, a, a distillery and winery and guest house that has been running uh, since around the same kind of time. It's been going since And that's been something. around long enough for them to have accepted at one point the currency of like uh, ducats or like uh, denarii <laughs> or something, right? Yeah, like, or just bits yeah, of gold. Yeah, yeah. I, remember, I remember the change from denarii to euros. Oh, tough times. <laughs> <laughs> tough times for the restaurant. <laughs> so uh, in terms of the UK, the Royal Mint is uh, a government-owned mint. So that's technically one of the oldest. There's 886. But the actual company Otterton Mill, a water mill in the UK, set beside the River Otter in Devon, uh, was recorded in the Doomsday Book in 1086. Fuck. This mill. And it's still running. The history in does, Europe is friggin' nuts, eh? Like, it is. It goes way back. Well, it, it just makes you realise if you want to, you know make something you've got no idea what the future is going to hold for the stuff that you make right or how long you're you know people always i mean like not many that building i guess the cafe or the name they seem to persist through time but but you know certainly like it's hard it's it's certainly hard to 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 travel or, or stay relevant and interesting into the future and less and less people do it. and it's random as well like you know sometimes who who we who we know mm. and, and recognize from old times listen let me share with you my blast from the past before we finish up okay um i walk into my living room the other day and uh fucking fraggle rock is on tv um, they remade it. I, yeah. So I say to my son, yeah. like, well, how did you find the Fraggle Rock? And he's like, oh, it's just on Apple TV Plus. And I was like, what, like a new one? And he's like, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, like, it's just come out. I was like, I used to watch this when I was your age, like before I, I went to bed. I can't remember the lyrics. Do, 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 do. Come do, down do, and play. for another day. Let the Fraggle play. Down, down to Fraggle, Fraggle Rock. Rock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. the same music and it's everything? It's the same music and everything, oh, yeah. Lots of the it. same puppets. It sounds like the same voice actors, but it's not probably not possible but oh man it's... what a what a show i yeah, love yeah. that the dozers were my favorite thing just quietly getting on with things just building shit yeah God bless them yeah lads. fraggle rock fraggle rock yeah. fucking hell yeah. that was one of the ones that my school had like a rude song about do you know what i mean <laughs> oh yeah it was like yeah down what in did fraggle you turn rock. fraggle rock into something cock. grab a fraggle buy his cock yeah it's like that I don't know. Like swing him in the air you know so it was usually swing like i don't know it's the, the whole air. thing oh yeah, man yeah. that's so I'm rude still find this funny yeah, yeah. i know all the rest of it it was really really smash him on a rock or something i guess <laughs> <laughs> no uh anyway it, it right with pubic hair uh it's fine um so 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 uh, one more article i've noticed this week that i wrote, wrote down uh we got uh, in iceland okay 12 years ago there was a financial crisis yeah well, obviously it hit iceland pretty hard as well yeah. it, it was a global thing but that caused um mcdonald's to shut down in Iceland for good. Right? Wow. And it's not been back. Uh, and on the day it shut down, there was a man, Hjartor Smarason, yes. right, who uh, bought a Big Mac and fries and forgot about it. And oh, I think found I saw this, yeah. Relatively recently. And um, it's still in Great Nick because they don't really go off. No, apparently it wasn't. It wasn't kept moist. I don't know. It was. It was put in a dry cupboard or yeah. something. Anyway, I don't think he. I don't think he saved it on purpose. But um, he he decided he discovered it and he was like, oh, I should donate this to, of course, the Icelandic museum. You know, it's a historical artifact. <laughs> well, a burger and some fries. A burger and some fries and mummified Big Mac and fries, <laughs> which honestly look fine. Yeah. Um, they were given to the National Museum of Get MRE Iceland. Steve on there. Oh, oh, these fries are... These, oh. <laughs> these are so bad. <laughs> Getting a lot of odor from the burger, but no bloom. <laughs> no bloom. Let's get, this, let's get this out onto a tray. Nice. Oh, no bloom. Not um, nice. <laughs> Not nice. <laughs> uh, so, of course, that's what the National Disgusting. Museum of Iceland said. They, they were like, do you know what? Because this is the thing, right, with the museums do. They have these huge, vast collections, and sometimes they buy stuff. And art, art museums particularly 
they spend a lot of money on art um, and then they, they sort of keep it in the back rooms rather than sell it uh, often. They'll, they'll kind of have it on the books and because and, no, there's no real advantage to them selling it because they whenever they buy things for their collections, it's all tax free. Mm. Right. Um, and in fact, they, they are not even tax free. They don't even have to like put it as a, a spend. You know, it could just be ignored. It's like, especially especially when they're gifted something, when they're gifted something for their collection, if they then sell it, they have to declare it uh, on the books. And, and so there's no real incentive for them to sell. Anyway, it's a whole complicated thing. Malcolm Gladwell did a really good thing about it. You could find it if you want. Um, but the National Museum of Iceland obviously didn't want this burger. So they gave it to the Bus Hotel Reykjavik, which I assume is a fine hotel. It's not <laughs> sure. like a travel in or something. Oh, but they then, put it on that night's menu. They didn't want it. No, they didn't put it on the night. They, did, they didn't want it. And so they passed it on to the Snotra House Hostel, uh, where it is now proudly displayed under one of those cookie things that they have in Starbucks, you know, the glass like um, things. Oh, yeah. This doesn't even seem like it's airtight, is what I'm saying. Uh, it's just on display. Nice. Um, and a, a famous piece of history for for Iceland. Which they must be so uh, proud. It's, it's not treasured, is it? No, it's it's passed around. Yeah. It's 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 not even second rate. It's third. It's a third rate treasure. It's not even in a museum. Imagine in like a couple of thousand years, though. Like uh, you know, it, it comes full circle, and the next Indiana Jones movie is about that that burger and fries. Like that's like the the, the lost ark or whatever. Oh my god, Nick Cage is it's, breaking it's, into yeah. the Snotland hotel. I'm looking for a fucking... burger. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so the, Michael Lewis wrote a book called Panic, which was a bunch of stories about the 2008 crash. And the one about the chapter about Iceland is really, really interesting because they were convinced that this is going to make put Iceland on the map. And they already had a lot of stuff that they would do in regards to um, ownership of uh, fish catching. Right. right. Sorry to stumble across that sentence, but I was trying to put it in what I thought was the right way. Bit of a touchy could, subject for us right. here in Jersey you, as well. You had the right to a certain amount of fish catch. Reopen some some Sorry some wounds there. Yeah, the French will be over again. Um, so, but you could sell a part of your catch if you like, and you could also sort of finance based on your portion of the catch or whatever. So it led to this kind of thing, and they were like, "Oh, we should get into banking." Oh, so what they were they were going to be trading it and like gaming the system on that and being yeah. like, "Oh, I'll buy these rights from these guys and right, sell right. them on for more." But then yeah, the, the whole they also the whole did this whole thing, like all the banking shit. stuff they did. Like the Icelandic economy went crazy, and all of these young people coming out of college and go straight into banking in Iceland and making all this money. The Icelandic bank, I think, was one of the first to fall and lost the UK, lost shitloads of money somehow because we'd been stupid enough to invest in it, something like that. Don't, don't correct bank, me if you want, just go, but... go read it for yourself. Yeah. But um, the uh, the interesting thing is, is all these, you could still get your insurance on your car. So apparently an awful lot of very brand new and very desirable BMWs were mis mysteriously catching fire all over Iceland as these people burnt their cars to try and get the insurance money back. Oh my um, God. Yeah, it's, it's a really, really interesting example of how the mania that can grip a whole country, but especially a small country where it really takes over every facet of daily life and, and everything that kind of depends on this new industry that you think, this is amazing, this is going to be this way forever, um, causes this terrible, terrible collapse. But the book's really interesting anyway, I recommend it. Panic! Exclamation mark. Panic. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I, I, that whole story is super interesting. You know, even, there's a bunch of, of, of documentaries about it that, that that show like these how it how it's in, in very short time you know uh, a country that is has got like three hundred thousand people became this kind of major global center of finance and it was like it was like what and and they were just yeah they would just turn up they would have like rows and rows of these black BMWs in the parking yeah you know outside these buildings and it was just this strange very strange just a madness bubble and it was all built on debt and borrowing and just like a house of cards you know oh, and, and it had no actual there's a video that's gone up um in the last few days called the line goes up which is all about nfts and stuff like that and uh, the guy that does it talks a bit about uh the 2008 crash and i think for any of you who are who may be children when it happened and kind of understand that there was a crash uh, but don't really understand what happened and just thought that's just the way it is. Go ahead and watch the video and watch about the crash and that kind of bubble um, and read about all those other bubbles that there have been and, and how much money people have lost and how convinced they were at the time 
that they were 100% right that this is going to be brilliant and make everybody money and we're all going to get rich. Anytime I hear those words, I am out. Because the dot-com bubble, the 2008 bubble, this is going to be another bubble. Please don't fall for this shit again. Go and read about bubbles and how they happen. And it is the same fucking story every time. These supposedly austere institutions telling you, oh no, this is a good thing to do. You, they, you're, they're wrong. It, if it doesn't make sense on the surface, you have to read all this fucking shit, watch all these videos explaining it to you. It's probably not a particularly good idea. And I'm I'm firmly on that fence. I'm with Kanye on this one. Yeah. I am with Kanye. Yeah, uh, this is one of the rare times we're going to end the podcast. By saying that yeah. we're all firmly with Kanye. <laughs> that we are By with Kanye. That, yeah. When it comes We're behind to Kanye on that. this one. Yeah, this has been an interesting mix of of chat about about scams and, as usual, weird meanderings, nostalgic uh, nonsense. We didn't really talk about any poop or dicks or anything this time, which is good for yeah, us. So, actually, so look after look after yourselves, look after your loved ones, yeah. and just 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 be good to each other. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, party on, dudes, and we'll we'll see you next next time. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.